restful and uh, happy Christmas season after an eventful December. Um, I just want to thank everyone this morning for stepping up and helping with today's service. Jennifer is here, but she's not here. Uh, in, she's just at the back, going to watch us for a change uh, as we go through today's service. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone that uh, contributed and had a part in, in December's Advent season. Uh, there was a lot going on, and we had a lot of services, and everyone stepped up to the plate, and everything went very, very well. Um, as you may remember, last year we didn't have a Christmas Eve service because of the storm. And the year before that, we got to Advent 3, and we had to shut down because of a another outbreak of, of COVID. We thought we were we were back permanently, but we weren't. And then the year before that, there was no service at all. So yeah, we made it through the whole of December without uh, issue, and, and that's, that was a, a good thing. We had lots of, uh, and especially Christmas Eve service through the afternoon, that was, that was an excellent day. Um, forgive me if I uh, stumble here a little bit, but I've got a few things I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, the announcements are a little light now that we've got through Advent, so there's a few things coming up in January uh, that we maybe can take note of um, after a busy Christmas season. Um, some of the announcements were on the screen or will be uh, are in the insert in your bulletin. Um, one highlight on the horizon is our, our board meeting is going to be in the afternoon on January the 18th at 1 p.m. Uh, property and Finance are going to meet January the 16th at 7 p.m. And then other committees that I'm not aware of will probably be meeting in January as time and, uh, presents itself. Um, and those members will probably know time and dates of, of their own meetings. Um, one other highlight is that what's brought to my attention is that uh, Shuffleboard is back on uh, this Friday, uh, the 12th at 1.30. That, so don't spill anything sticky on the floor or else the rings won't go. So, uh, we be like flooding the rink. We'll have to get out there and polish things up. And, uh, but anyway, Shuffleboard is back on next, uh, next Friday. Um, a couple of updates from kind of behind the scenes that I just wanted to make you aware of. That stuff goes on every day around here and you may or may not be aware of what goes on. Um, I want to thank Pat for stepping up to the plate. We had a lengthy discussion uh, this week. Uh, she had a kind of a catastrophic meltdown on her computer um, and had to take it out for servicing. And then um, it was an update error. I've had the same thing on our own computer. We had to take it to Dave Perrin to scrub it. And, and he assured us everything was okay. She got it back. But then that meant reinstalling all the programs and her backups. and. Um, you know, it was a good thing, it was a bad thing. It just showed us that she has backups, especially on the finances, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the very important items were all saved and, and backed up, but she still had to reinstall them. But, um, so it's just a sign of the times, so you just can't go to a filing cabinet and pull out your file again, and away you go. So, uh, but anyways, it's just a struggle and a lot of extra work for her to reinstall. You forget about how many programs you do have on that laptop, which is your main tool and the center of your universe. So. Um, thanks to Pat for, for the extra work she had, and it's, it's still ongoing as to what she needs to, to put back into the system and to kind of get it up and running. And um, whether or not that laptop needs to be replaced, they seem to think it was okay for a while, and that just will buy some time to kind of reevaluate things and see where, where we need to. But anyway, she used our other laptop and, and got the, uh, the service uh, printed out. Um, Another thing that you may or may not care about is that our dishwasher is still not repaired. Um, it's just one of those things. It's a commercial unit. Uh, I, was out, I was here the other day with the repairman. Um, he determined that the motor was shot after a few other catastrophic failures before Christmas. Um, he went through the system and we did discover that the motor, it was just the heart of the system. So he's going to come up with some numbers and product availability and see whether or not, uh, you know, the unit is 30 years old, but yet um, it's a very expensive unit to replace because it is a commercial unit. So once we get the numbers, then we'll sit down and determine whether or not there's value in repairing it and trying to get another five years or more out of it. And then 
uh, you know, looking to the future, if that's the case on what we, you know, it may run for a long time with a new motor or, you know, little things happen, but that's just part of the program. So we are uh, still, so having said that, it's going to be a couple more weeks without a dishwasher, so we'll have to use that sink and some jab axe. <laughs> It's January, so we haven't got any big events on the horizon that I'm aware of, other than coffee time. So. Um, but anyways, it, it's still uh, in the works, we haven't forgotten about it, and, and they are looking actively into making whatever we can do with it to kind of get it up and running again. Um, joys and concerns, I don't have a lot of updates uh, on uh, members uh, since before Christmas. Um, uh, so if anybody, I guess a, a joy would be the, the concern is the computer failed, the joy is that we were able to back it up and so there's, a, I'm kicking that off and the fact that there's no snow out there is a concern to some in the industry and the rest of us that don't have to clean cars off or get into heavy boots, it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, and as far as members health is concerned, yeah, um, it was mentioned that uh, Gore Koppel is uh, in the hospital and he's, he's ill. I don't know if that was something. Okay, sorry. It's out, but it will get out eventually. It's, uh, and then uh, Jeff Allen asked if I had uh, mentioned that his, uh, uh, he and Deb's brother-in-law, uh, Dale Smith, is recovering from surgery in Barrie. And then um, other members, Valerie's here, and there's other members that we're concerned that are kind of back and running again after Christmas. So um, if there's anybody else that I should or shouldn't uh, have talked about, then uh, yeah. I don't know if there's she anything. Was in hospital in December. Three she was? Okay. Three weeks. I... Yes, she, she fell in her house. Oh, I did and see her out there with uh, had, uh, Mark earlier. Okay. Lymphatic in her back. So. Okay. Um, any other members? Just keep those people in your, your hearts. And if anything comes up, then we'll uh, certainly try and make members aware of, of what's going on out there as, as time goes on. Um, Anyways, that's uh, what I have in the way of little updates over the, the season that I'm aware of. Um, Could I just make a little comment? Um, I'm hoping to start the choir back up on Thursday, um, so at 1.30. <laughs> if you'd like to join the choir so that you can sing the hymns at the front, and we have some simple, pretty uh, standard anthems for January. So if you uh, feel so inclined, uh, 1.30. 1.30 on Thursday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that one Thursday that you have your meeting, which is like the 18th, I think, or something? Yes. Um, we can work around that. We'll figure out uh, with the group that comes how we can have our practice and other okay. Or we can, we still have time to alter. We, we have altered our, our times, too. So, okay. But well, the we'll work process was, yeah, we were trying to do an afternoon meeting when everybody was available and uh, yeah. things like that. So, and you can see Mary's here. So, <laughs> for the month of January, and, and for, us, for, for, uh, for staying with us as long as, uh, long as she can and will, and uh, yeah, we're, we're grateful for that. People around the world eagerly anticipate and commemorate the arrival of a new year. Iconic events like Times Square Ball Drop in New York uh, initiate joyous champagne toasts, and uh, communities across the country. In Spain, the tradition involves consuming 12 grapes at the stroke of midnight, symbolizing hope for 12 prosperous months ahead. Meanwhile, the Dutch ignite bonfires using Christmas trees, and in Greece, it's customary to savor St. Basil's cake while searching uh, for the hidden gold coin. As the clock approaches midnight on December 31st, many participants uh, revel in uh, cacophony of noise and merriment, often pausing to sing little Lang Syne. However, within the Christian church, it has its own set of rituals, feasts, and music to take center stage. Watch night services and covenanting renewals provide an opportunity to break free from old habits and make resolutions for the upcoming year. Watch night services are initially introduced by John Wensley in the 18th century and have deep historical roots. These gatherings were typically des designated as covenant renewal service, uh, aiming to inspire a renewed dedication uh, to personal and communal spirituality in the approaching year. 
In contemporary renditions of, of watch night service, faith communities often experience a profound uh, spiritual rejuvenation by welcoming the new year with a sacred space. As Ed Phelps, professor of uh, worship and liturgical uh, theology of Chandler School of Theology, uh, emphasizes the focus should not solely be on the worshiper's convenience, but rather than the act of distinctive covenant renewal as a gift to God. A means of making oneself spiritually open to God's guidance in preparation for another year of faithful discipleship. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We gather to worship and the witness within the boundaries of the Treaty 18, uh, of 1818. This is a traditional territory of the Ashinabag, Husni, Tetuani, and Wendat peoples, and home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples as part of the intricate nationhood that reaches across Turtle Island. We acknowledge their stewardship of this land without the ages, throughout the ages and our desire to seek a relationship between the indigenous and non-indigenous peoples of this land that is based on honor and deep respect. Let us center ourselves for this New Year's service with our words of gathering. What a past year this has been. So much has happened. Some are in all of this, God journeyed with us, guiding, healing, comforting, and rejoicing. We are filled with gratitude for all God's presence. Today, we are on the precipice of a new year. In all that is to come, we commit to trusting in God's love. Together, we walk into this future as a faithful community of generosity, compassion, and joyfulness. Our gathering hymn is 79, Arise, Your Light is Come. Yet far too often, we succumb to 
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm reading from the uh, New International uh, Bible this morning. And the first um, scripture from the New Testament is Matthew 2, uh, um, 1 to 12, regarding the Magi. The Magi visits the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, What is the one who has been born the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has risen. But you, Bethlehem, in, Ju in the land of Ju Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house, they saw the child, his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go, uh, not, <coughs> I'm sorry, not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The second reading this morning is um, also from the New Testament in the Gospel of Luke, and it is um, Luke 21, 1 through 4. The widow's offering. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All of these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty and put in all <coughs> that she has to live on. Here ends the reading for this morning.
you, it's finally over. What a relief, right? I don't know about you, but Christmas sometimes can be seriously exhausting. Right after today's worship, it's time for Operation Take Down the Christmas Decorations. The Christmas tree, the garlands, the ornaments, the decorations. They're all going into storage until next year. Maybe you've already done this at your house. Or perhaps you've got a pile of stale Christmas cookies you're not sure what to do with. Are they for the birds, your unsuspecting kids' lunch boxes, or still waiting their fate on a plate? <laughs> for many of us, it's back to the grind. Kids, maybe grandkids, head back to school, and adults return to work, if they had some time off during the holidays. You know the holiday is over when routine sets back in. But you know what? I know that at Christmas we tend to be kinder to family, friends, strangers, even people we don't necessarily like. We're a tad more thoughtful, generous, and considerate. But not everyone, not always. I'll relate a little story. Deb and I were shopping at the superstore a couple days before Christmas. Now it was busy, people were buying last minute groceries and expensive things. And that store can be expensive with all the fancy foods and such. We found people to be impatient when wanting to get their carts around a traffic jam. A lot of unsmiling faces and we thought, this is no fun. Well then we happened to go to the dollar store right afterwards. People there were happy, joking around with each other, and generally a lot nicer. A different demographic to be sure. There's a lesson there. I'll leave it to you to figure it out. The world just seems happier when we're all kinder. It's like we get a glimpse of how God intends us to be. It's beautifully captured in part of a poem by Edgar Guest, which goes something like this. Human beings are the finest towards the finish of the year. We are almost like we should be when Christmas season's here. Kind of rhymes. The danger is once our Christmas stuff is safely packed away, we may also pack away the spirit of kindness and generosity that permeates the Christmas season. That is why it's so important for us to hear Matthew's account of the wise ones seeking out Jesus. And after all, the story takes place after the birth of Jesus. And it's a great story. Strangers on a mysterious quest, a jealous king, a guiding star, extravagant gifts, giving in awe and wonder to a young child, and a secret escape. Mary, standing there watching all of this unfold, must have been dumbfounded by the generosity of the three visitors. How wonderful that these three strangers from the East were not only committed to finding this special child, but they were also willing to do whatever was needed to bestow their joyful excitement in finding him and offering the best of what they could give as an expression of their joy. The Reverend Stephen Iverson tells this story about giving and generosity. It goes like this. Several years ago, a faithful member of the congregation I was serving offered me a gift. In this instance, I was hesitant to accept it for a whole host of reasons. The biggest being that I considered the gift far too extravagant and costly for what I knew this person could afford. But I could tell by the expression on this person's face and the joy that radiated from their eyes that they had thought long and hard about offering such a generous gift. When I tried to dissuade them from giving me this gift, they looked at me and began to sob almost uncontrollably. Through their cracking voice, they said to me, words so powerful, I will never forget them. I quote, please, please do not reject my blessing that I am giving to you. They were willing to do whatever was needed to bestow their gift on me. End of the story. The person in this story is reminiscent of the poor widow in the story from Luke. Jesus points her out an example when he says, she out of her poverty put in all that she had. Again, someone willing to do whatever was needed to give and bless. Faithful offerings, gifts of faith, can never be evaluated by the number of zeros contained in the price of the gift. Faithful offerings, Offerings of blessing come from the deep and profound joy in knowing that what we have offered makes a difference and is significant and meaningful. What joy we feel in our hearts when we offer the least is nothing compared to when we offer our best. Doing whatever it takes 
in order to be generous and share whatever we can is certainly part of following the way of Jesus. Faith, commitment, and compassion form the bedrock of generosity. Offering meals for those at risk and who live daily with food insecurity, visiting a neighbor who otherwise lives in isolation, financially supporting broader community projects in Canada and around the world, are opportunities to practice generosity and grow deeper in our faith. This is the blessing that we get to take part in to our generous gifts to the mission and service of the United Church. Mission and service work to transform lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and it helps in the building of a better world. Amen. Maxine will share such a story with us. So when we think of education, many of us envision a classroom with books and chalkboards, but education extends far beyond that. Through education, we can learn how the world works and how we work in the world. The Women and Family Services Division at the Church of Christ in Congo provides children with the education and training they need to take charge of their own lives when they leave school. <clears throat> With a combination of traditional education and life skills, <clears throat> they provide each child with the skills that they need to thrive after graduation. Through funding, livestock and seeds are purchased to teach children sustainable agriculture. <clears throat> Still caught in there. Older children have the opportunity to assist with livestock after their classes. They learn to care for chickens and take part in odd jobs in the field. Your generosity through mission and service helps fund programs that inspire learning and skills for life. Thank you. So as this new year unfolds, having just experienced a glimpse of how God intends us to be, and if we really want to be change and see change, the question is this, what gifts are each of us called to offer? Imagine feeling and believing so deeply that you have an extravagant gift to offer because you do. The kind of gift that you are willing to do whatever it takes to offer because it will literally save lives. This is the type of generosity that unleashes powerful, transformative, and holy blessings. I invite you to be generous. Please consider making a special year-end or beginning of the year gift in support of the ministries provided by Mission and Services. There are many ways through the United Church donation page, by phone, I'll give you the number if you'd like, or in through a special offering with Mission and Service envelopes. Thank you for all the ways you shine your faith through your generosity and sharing. Amen. And now we'll go to hymn 575.
and to mission and service, assist friends and strangers, those who believe as we do and those who believe differently, neighbors across town and partners across the globe. Your generosity is such a gift.
we commit again to honor and fulfill these promises. Do you promise to participate in the ministry of the church and to use your resources to support others in need locally and through the mission and service of the United Church of Canada? gently. May we speak only after we have listened well. Creator of all life, help us enter the new year, year rapidly, aware that you are, uh, you have empowered every creature and plant, every person and habitat with beauty and purpose. May we regard the world with tenderness. May we honor rather than destroy. We also pray for those that have been ailing of late. Bernard Allen, who has been in hospital. And also Wendy Dunlop and Valerie and Doug uh, Robinson, who are still recovering from surgery. Wendy Whalen, manager, uh, she's managing at home for um, home for Christmas, which she did, and she is recovering fairly well on her foot. We also pray for Marjorie Ridley, who has had uh, been suffering from back issues. We also pray for Jean Flynn, who has been recovering from surgery, and Fran Somerville, who has been dating prior to Christmas. And we pray for those who have not been mentioned. Lord, 
We pray that they feel the presence of your healing hand as they venture forth upon their journey of recovery. Dear Lord, dear Lord, we pray for the healing that may provide us with the strength that we are facing everyday trials and uh, or our life daily challenges. We pray to seek vision and also align my will with thy will so that the vision that is being nurtured deep in my heart may reflect your will and blossom into the truth of righteousness in my life. We pray for trans transformation, seeking that you guide us, not for our benefit, but for the benefit of the world, molding us, making us, shaping us, changing us to be the new creation you have us be. We pray for both uh, to be messengers and receptors of messages, that we may be an instrument of conveyance for your holy word and blessings. We pray for community. We ask you, Lord, to give us in supporting ventures to support community work and afford us the insight that when we pray for community, that we can see your hand at work. Pray for acceptance. Please allow me to have acceptance of all things in my life and give my heart peace that passes all understanding. We pray for making room at our table. We seek that your presence guides us and affords us a table to be a place of peace where there is harmony, love, goodwill, reconciliation between those who gather around it. We pray for truth seeking. Lord, you created us. You are truth. Help us to know truth when I see it and learn truth when I am tortured. We pray to seek your support, Lord. Open my eyes to see you. Open my ears that I can hear you as I cry. When I am hungry, when I am scared, when I am beaten, Lord, open my heart to you and to others to receive help and support. We pray for the abundance of generosity. Teach me to be generous, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek rest, to labor and not to ask for reward. Say that, that knowing that I do your will. Lover of all souls, help us enter the new year joyously, willing to love and dance and dream. Remember many talents and gifts with thanks, and looking forward to how we can be useful to them to be a blessing. We offer these and all our prayers in the name of the one who will walk with us upon this journey of the new year, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our transgressions.
As you have been fed, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go release the imprisoned. As you have received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. Knowing that the blessing of the Creator, Christ the Holy Spirit, is always present and it's more than you can ever imagine. Amen. And for those of you after the service, uh, to give thanks for those that participated today and for you to be here. And for those that are following on um, screen um, at home. So we give our blessings. We ask that you join us for fellowship in the sea where afterwards feel free to do that time to have time and fellowship together. Thank you.